You want to stump Ben Shapiro? Yeah. Pray for him, y'all. So my question is going to take a little bit of framing, as any good question does. Oh, I'll stand here. Cool. Um, so I hope you'll bear with that. Um, and I'm going to make some assumptions in the framing of this question. So if at any point you disagree with the assumptions, feel free to interrupt at any time. So I think we can all agree that just because something is legal doesn't necessarily mean it's moral. So for example, slavery was once legal, later illegal, but it was always immoral. Similarly, for something like a state-sanctioned genocide, the Holocaust, for example, where the Nazis were permitted to kill masses of people, um, it was always immoral. Um, we could also fairly say, I think, that those who are targeted by genocide, as well as those in the larger society, would be justified in taking lethal action against those who are carrying out the genocide. Um, I think that's just fair to say. Um, also, if people chose to bomb the centralized killing centers of these sort types of genocides, like the gas chambers at Auschwitz, uh, we would say that that is justified. Also, it would be silly to ask people to, who are being genocided or people in that society at large to simply wait and not take vigilante action and to simply vote for a different government that would subsequently uh, you know, institute a different policy. Okay, okay. I, I, this is all fine. I'm, there. Sure, I'm get almost, to, get I'm the almost question, there. Martin. I promise I'm almost there. There is a question at the end of this. Yeah, hold on, yeah, yeah. just hold on. Um, so I think it would be silly to ask them to do that when you know, potentially millions of people annually are dying on an ongoing basis, innocent people. It would be silly to ask them to do all that. So given all that, and you didn't interrupt, so I assume you agree with those moral assumptions sure. uh, in there. Yes. Um, you have said that Planned Parenthood is a genocidal organization and that abortion is murder. So my question is, do you support... Uh, people who bomb abortion clinics, do you feel like they are morally justified? And if not, why not? And do you take back uh, things that you have said, like Planned Parenthood being a uh, homicidal, a genocidal organization? Okay, so number one, I don't take back a word I've ever said about Planned Parenthood. Uh, number two... Uh... Respect. You shouldn't. This murder, voluntarily. Number two... Innocent the life. The only way that force becomes justified is when the system is unchangeable. Meaning that my understanding of violence in a, in a democracy, particularly in, internally in a democracy, is that when all other options are exhausted, then violence is justified. All other options have not been exhausted with regard to regulation of abortion. Beyond that, there's also the question of, as I would suggest, mens rea, with regard to many of the people who work at Planned Parenthood, so many of them don't actually understand what they're doing. I, I think that if many people understood what they were doing, then, then that would be a much uglier thing. But with that said, Again, if you're talking about broad-scale changes in a society and how you accomplish that, there's also a pragmatic issue. So there's a moral issue and a pragmatic issue. One is that in a democracy, you know, m killing abortion doctors, for example, would be immoral so long as there are other options to stop the abortion doctor on the table that would be more effective, in my view, as a long-term matter. That is certainly going to be true of legal changes over time. Uh, then there is the pragmatic issue, which is that if you started murdering abortion doctors, that wouldn't not only stop abortion, it would grant an entirely new life to the abortion movement. No, that was a really long question. Sorry. <laughs> so first off, I just have to acknowledge the fact that this is what a rational discussion looks like. No yelling, no screaming. He laid his, his foundation, the young man asking the question. You had your turn, Ben has his turn open, respectful dialogue. That's a, a valuable point of etiquette that has been replaced with ignorance of society and closed mindedness. Everybody has an opinion like elbows. Everybody got a few of them, but nobody wants to hear the other side. Nobody wants to listen to what other people's experiences and viewpoints look like. You can point out that somebody's wrong, but you got to lay out why they're wrong. You got to lay out facts of why they're wrong. Even with a very long drawn out question like he had, he tried to set him up. It didn't work though, because Ben Shapiro, to my understanding, broke it down in this way. You, you can't kill an abortion doctor just to try to end abortion if you haven't uh, used all the means necessary. And I think this was before Roe v. Wade was overturned, even though Roe v. Wade being overturned just gives power back to the states. We still have a tremendously long way to go in the fact that Abortion is still possible for people to do just depending on what state they live in. In my opinion, it needs to be made illegal on all fronts and we need to protect life because God knew us in the womb, formed us in the womb. God doesn't make mistakes. No matter how that baby got there, people go to the extreme cases of rape and, and, and things like that. But the child is a blessing. The child isn't the one who sinned and and executed that evil act of rape that man or that woman will have to face that judgment someday but you can't go and then voluntarily murder a child out of convenience out of you being uncomfortable because the child is innocent life it didn't do anything at all jesus talking in matthew 18 verse 14 says so it is not the will of my father that's god who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish one of these little children no matter when you deem it as viable most people aren't even viable at 20 30 40 still living with their mama still don't have their own job still relying on the government or their parents to take care of them so it's it's no 
way you can say a six month old, a three, three month old fetus or zygote, whatever you want to fancily label it as and try to be clever is any less viable than people in the real world are when they've came out of the womb, when they're walking and, and speaking and talking, no matter what they look like, what language they speak, you can't use that viable argument because a person at 40 years old still relying on their parents, still relying on somebody else to make their their life it, what it is and bring it into fruition and allow them to live and function every single day. That doesn't that's not any less viable than a three month old fetus or an embryo, however you want to label it again. And then Ecclesiastes 11 verse five says, as you do not know the way the spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with a child. So you do not know the work of God who makes everything. So in that they're talking about you, if you don't know the fact that God makes everything, that includes the bones in the womb of a woman with a child, then you can't say you know God. So really to my Christians out there, people that aren't practicing Christians, that don't fear the Lord, that don't believe in the the, the God, the Almighty. People say they believe in God, but that's usually a, a very, very broad spectrum. And they're, they're not believing in the same God that is the God Almighty, Yahweh, that you know sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, came in human form because we were messing up so bad. They don't believe in that guy. I'm talking about the God almighty. As you do not know the way the spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with child. So you do not know the work of God who makes everything. So if you're willing to kill a baby and you claim to be a Christian, you are falsely prophesying. You are falsely claiming to be a Christian because you don't value the life that's in the womb. If you think you can just take it and that not be deemed as murder. Y'all get what I'm saying? It might sound a little confusing, but from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20, 221, the Bible is the word of God. And y'all want to know why I put all my eggs in, in that one basket and believe it is without error from cover to cover? Because I have 791,328 reasons to believe so. That's the number of words in the Bible, just in case you weren't aware. And not you, not I, not any atheist, nobody other than God Almighty wrote all of those words. They all came from God. And there's 1,189 chapters, 31,101 verses. And they all are from God. So believe what you will, but I believe from cover to cover, the Bible is without a doubt the accurate, perfect, infallible, authoritative word of God of the universe, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before leaving earth. And that's where I stand. That's what I always believe. That's where I always put all my trust and faith. And when we're baptized in his name, we can have that eternal peace and salvation. And that's what I preach. That's what I do is share the gospel because I want you to be saved how I was saved. I want you to be changed from those evil, wicked ways of thinking where truth is relative where no life is valuable, you're your own God, that, this, this, that, and the third. I used to think that way. I grew up that way. It, it changes the game completely when you start living with Jesus Christ at the center. And when you try so hard to make your own paths and fall into the realm of lost and out of control at times, that's what we're seeing all over the world right now. In the older days, even folks that weren't Christians, they had a sense of boundaries and parameters they wouldn't even cross. But now it's like anything goes. And in 2022, boundaries have fallen to the wayside and crumbled apart at the seams. That's because Jesus Christ isn't at the center. When you truly say, what would Jesus do and live how Jesus lives? Everything is phenomenal. Everything is beautiful. Everything is perfect. Everything can only get better and strive for eternal peace and salvation. Without that, there's no purpose. There's no meaning. There's no values of life. There's nothing. And that's what we see today. So we got to get it back. We got to keep preaching the truth. And what we know is the word of God. And that's what I'm going to do on this channel. But comment your thoughts below. Let's keep this conversation rolling. I know I can get off into some long tangents, but shout out to the young man who asked the question to Ben Shapiro, as always, for coming correct, standing up for life and not only standing up for life, but laying it out in a form and fashion to where it's respectful. But it really makes you think. And a lot of times people can't even grasp what he said unless they watch those clips or listen back 10 times just to really comprehend what he's laying out as his evidence and logical ways of thinking but again let me know what you guys think below don't forget to bang that thumbs up button subscribe hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all future videos uh share this video definitely get this out in front of other people for obvious reasons allow them to think for themselves and see what real thinking looks like what real dialogue looks like to where you can listen to the other side take a step back and not have to bash them just for having a different opinion and when they have facts you don't got to say anything at all because they had facts they laid it out and they came correct but if you want to take it a step further you want to go outside of that you want to 
support the channel. Hey, check out my wife's Etsy store down below. She makes a ton of different awesome Christian apparel designs and American and stuff that you see me wearing pretty much every single video. That's linked down below, probably the first link. Uh, if you want to buy me a coffee, you could do that. Donate on PayPal. Uh, join the Patreon fam. Tons of different options. By no means do you have to. I'm just grateful to have y'all here, man. Uh, I'm praying for you. I love you. I'm praying for this entire world and all the demonic sin that we see right here. I know God's going to work it all out. God always wins. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life, and the light will always outshine the darkness. No matter what these people try to tell you, don't let them mislead you. But until next time, Godspeed. I'm gone.